Hello, and welcome back to the Rollerball tutorial. In this video, we'll curve our game world using a custom curve shader. The shader file is available for download from the link in the description below. Curving the world enhances gameplay by making the environment feel larger and more dynamic, adding a unique visual style to your game. To make this work, we need objects with enough geometry. Unity's default plane isn't ideal because it has too few vertices, causing the curve to look jagged. By adding more geometry, the shader can create a smooth and seamless effect. Now let's import the road model we designed in Blender, which has more geometry. If you're unsure how to create the road, check out the tutorial linked in the description below. Let's get started. First, create a folder named Models in your Unity Project's Assets directory. Right-click inside this folder and choose Import New Asset. Select your road model and import it. Once imported, you'll see the model along with its materials and mesh. Now simply drag the road model into the hierarchy to add it to your scene. Great, the road is now ready for us to use in Unity. To test our road, let's first hide Ground 1 from the inspector by unchecking its visibility. Now hit the play button. You'll notice that the ball and obstacles fall right through the road. Why is this happening? When you select the road in the inspector, you'll see that the materials are attached, but there's no collider assigned to it. Without a collider, Unity doesn't recognize the road as a solid object, so the ball and obstacles pass right through. To fix this, we'll add a mesh collider to the road. Select the road in the hierarchy. In the inspector, click Add Component and search for Mesh Collider. Add it to the road. Now, hit play again, and you'll see that everything works perfectly. The ball and obstacles interact with the road as expected. In our previous setup, the ground had a trigger as its child, which helped move the ground forward when the ball passed through it. Let's replicate that functionality for our new road. Locate the trigger under the previous ground in the hierarchy. Copy the trigger, then paste it as a child of the new road. Reposition the trigger so it sits a few units forward, just past the end of the road. Next, we'll duplicate the road to create an infinite effect. Select the road in the hierarchy, duplicate it, and rename the copies as Road 1 and Road 2. Reposition the roads. Since our new road is longer than the previous ground, extend the distance. For this example, the second road should be placed 150 units ahead of the first one. Now update the trigger lengths. Select the trigger for each road. In the inspector, change the ground length value to 1150. Hit play and you'll see that the roads are working seamlessly as an infinite track. The ball now triggers the road to shift forward correctly, creating a smooth gameplay experience. Now that our new roads are in place, we no longer need the old grounds. Let's remove them from the hierarchy. To make our world curve, start by importing the shader file you downloaded earlier into your project. We'll apply this curved shader to all materials used in the game objects. 
Select your road model. You'll notice its materials are embedded in the model. To extract these materials, locate the Materials section. Right-click the materials and choose Extract Materials. Save them in a new folder, such as Materials Road, to keep things organized. Now that the road's materials are separate, let's apply the curved shader. Select all the extracted road materials in the Materials folder. In the Inspector, change the shader from Standard to Curved Shader. After that, we'll create a script to initialize the curvature values. Create a new script named Scene Manager. Inside this script, we'll use the Awake function to set the initial values for the curvature. Set the curvature to 2 and trimming to 0.1. After saving the script, quickly attach it to any existing game object, or you can create a new one specifically for this purpose. So when you hit play and stop, you'll instantly see the road curve in both the scene view and the game view. When you play the game now, the road appears curved, but objects like the ball, obstacles, and coins might not align correctly. This happens because their materials haven't been updated to use the curved shader. To finish everything off, remove the ground materials since we are now using the road and its materials. Change the shader for both the obstacle and the player to the curved shader. Now, let's move on to the coins. Since we haven't assigned any materials to the coins yet, we need to do that quickly. Duplicate the player material. Rename it to coin and adjust the color to match the look you want for the coins. Next, open the coin prefab and assign the coin material to all the coins inside the prefab. Since the material is based on the curved shader, you don't need to change the shader again. Now, when you hit play, everything will look perfect and the game will have a fantastic curved world effect. Furthermore, to enhance the look of the game, you can make some quick adjustments to the Cinemachine camera. Change the lens value to around 71 for a better field of view. Set the follow offset to 0, 6, May to 6 for the X, Y, and Z axes to get a nice perspective on the game world. Additionally, you can quickly modify the coin color to make it more visible in the game so it stands out clearly. If you have any questions or need assistance, feel free to leave a comment below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more Unity tutorials. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.